Good morning, I'm Susie Gilbert. Here are this morning's top stories. The bill is named for Brady Cunningham, a Southeast Missouri boy who died from crab A disease earlier this year. Now this little guy's not what usually comes to mind when you think of the recession, but workers here at the shelter tell me that tough economic times have flooded in animals, so many that they aren't even accepting anymore. Governor Jane Nixon plans to sign legislation today expanding the number of tests run on newborns for potential genetic disorders. Red light cameras this week will begin to take pictures of cars at two busy Columbia intersections. The chance of getting West Nile is slim, but experts say the fact that nearly one in five mosquitoes tested in St. Louis County came back positive is cause for awareness and repellent. Missouri already requires that babies be screened for 67 diseases. Three people died on Missouri's waterways during the 4th of July weekend. Brady's family plans to attend today's ceremony at the state capitol. That's it for your news this hour. Have a great day. <laughs> These animals at Callaway Hills Animal Shelter are waiting to be adopted. The shelter has been at full capacity for more than two months now. Now this little guy's not what usually comes to mind when you think of the recession, but workers here at the shelter tell me that tough economic times have flooded in animals, so many that they aren't even accepting anymore. Part of it is from people, you know, losing, you know, have been losing their home, calling, you know, needing to place their animals. We get a lot of calls like that. Not only are more people giving up their pets, but workers say fewer people are showing up to adopt pets. Patty Forrester with the Central Missouri Humane Society in Columbia says a lot of calls are from longtime pet owners. Uh, some people just can't afford to keep them anymore. Some people allow their animals to have puppies or kittens, and then they have too many and they can't find them all homes, and so they bring them to us. Fortunately, the Columbia shelter hasn't had to turn any animals away, partly because of an infusion of cash from a nationwide contest. The Jefferson City Shelter has also seen an increase in animals, and although they've almost reached their limit on cats, they're still accepting pets as long as the owner lives in Cole County. Officials say this overpopulation problem can be easily prevented. They say it's important to have your pet spayed or neutered, and to keep in mind adopting a pet is a lifelong commitment. Try very, very hard to keep your pet. They want to be with you. They don't want to be here at a shelter. Susie Gilbert, KRCG News. Native Americans from across the U.S. gathered in Bear Cat Arena Saturday and danced to the beat of their heritage. Arena director Jeremy Shields says this sixth annual powwow is a celebration of life. Showing everybody that you're well and healthy and that you're dancing and and to some people, they dance for people that aren't well enough to dance. 120 dancers and six drum groups performed. Shannon Leroy of the Omaha tribe of Nebraska brought his family to the celebration. He says it's an important family event that he shares with his nephew and three kids. We try to keep our culture alive, our traditions alive for our, for our youth, and try to keep them, you know, try to steer them away in a positive direction. You know. And in addition to providing positive family experiences, the powwow also sets the stage for cultural learning. It's a collision of cultures celebrating the past and the present. Come out, enjoy yourself, listen to music, you know, meet somebody, take pictures, and just all around enjoy yourself. For the Northwest Missourian Online, I'm Susie Gilbert. People are calling James Pennell a hero. His family says he's Superman. That's because on Friday, July 17th, the 32-year-old Kingdom City man ran into oncoming traffic outside Eris's Pizza in Fulton to save a two-year-old boy. I just remember the feeling that he wasn't going to stop. That's when he pushed the toddler to safety and was hit by a van. I initially knew what happened because um, the lady at a table near the window screamed. Eris's pizza manager Jackie Craig says it happened right here. The boy slipped out the front door and took off for the street. That's when Pennell came to the rescue. The hit sent Pennell flying across the intersection. Initially, nobody knew that the guy down the street was injured because he was so far away from the baby, and then finally someone responded to the man. I remember very little pieces inside the uh, ambulance. Uh, these are all like little snapshot pictures in the dark. Pennell suffered many injuries, including a spinal fracture, a broken leg, and torn ligaments to his left knee. 
Now he's at Rusk Rehabilitation Center. His doctors say he'll need multiple surgeries, but is expected to recover in time. The first of his surgeries will be to remove this external fixator, the device that's holding his knee in place. And not only does James Pennell have a long road to recovery, he also has a family journey ahead. He and his wife Andrea just had their third child on Wednesday. My uh, number one job in here is to heal my body and get back home so I can be with my wife and kids and get back home with life. The toddler and his family recently visited Pennell. Despite their thank yous, Pennell says seeing the boy standing next to him was enough. They got a very cute kid that I'm glad they got to take home. And from support funds to benefit dinners, Pennell says the public support has been tremendous. Very uplifting and helpful. I mean, it gives me one less thing I, I have to worry about. As for being called a hero? It doesn't mean as much as knowing that the boy was safe. Susie Gilbert, KRCG News.